Hey, good morning, fellow preppers. Um, this is Jeff from Indiana Preparedness here. Um, gonna make a quick video put out this morning. Um, I am going to be running um, sort of a mock bug out uh, this weekend, um, testing some gear. Uh, this is something that I've done in the past, about two years ago I did, um, <clears throat> where I grab my bug out bag and I go out to a campground and I just test the gear and see how it would fare if I really had to do such a thing. Um, two years ago ended as a disaster and I, more on that later. <laughs> um, I failed across the board. Um, this year I'm going to do it and try it again. Um, and this time I'm going to be taking the Rhino Ready, um, companion. I believe this is the companion one, if I'm reading this correctly, that I just purchased. Um, and I'm going to be taking this bag. It is a pre-configured bug out bag. Um, that's got supposedly enough gear in it for two people to last three days. So I'm going to be taking this bag out and running it through its courses. Now, I'm not really testing it um, from a merchandise perspective um, or a product perspective. I am a little bit, but it's mostly to test my, my uh, skill set as well. And just to see what would happen if a uh, disaster came down the road and you had to grab whatever was necessary not your pre-configured bag, right? Not your homegrown bag, but uh, a, a pre-configured bag um, that somebody else came up with, right? And hit the hit hit the the rural environment, right? And see how you you dealt with um, with all this gear. So um, I'm breaking a guideline and I'm breaking a rule in this experiment. The guideline is uh, I tend to not like pre-config pre-configured bags. Um, and this one obviously is, is very pre-configured. Um, and I, I tend to shy away from anything that's pre-configured that comes out of the box and it's everything that you need to survive. Well, I like to know what I've got in my bag. So that's a guideline I have that I'm going to be breaking. The second thing, the second rule of, uh, preparedness and specifically bugging out that I'm breaking is test your gear, right? Test your gear before you have to hit the field. I'm not testing any of this stuff. <laughs> okay. I've seen, um, I've seen the list of what's in it, uh, in the bag, and I'm relatively confident that, that uh, um, Ryan already has covered everything. So we're going to, we're going to find out. Um, but I have no idea. I don't know what quality the knife is. I don't know, um, the quality of the shelter, so on and so forth. I've never, I haven't even opened this bag, right? It is still completely sealed up. Um, the only thing I've done is taken it out of its uh, the box that it that it shipped in. I am going to take these two little books here um, from a local survivalist named Creek Stewart. You probably heard me talk about him in the past, but um, I have these little pocket guides that Creek puts out, um, and 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 I'm really going to do these because um, during the weekend because I suck at knots uh, really bad, and I've always kind of wanted to figure out how to do a, a figure four deadfall. So um, I am taking those. So the rules are, um, the rules that I'm going to kind of lay down on myself are going to be that the the for the primary um, survival aspects of the bag uh, of the weekend I have to use the bag, right? Um, I've rented a just a campsite in a local state park, <clears throat> and so um, I do kind of have to follow the rules of the state park, and so in that regard. Things like water. The bag supposedly comes with water and purification system, but um, you can't source water, I don't believe, from like natural creeks and surroundings. And the same thing with wood. You can't go out into the into the forest and, and grab a bunch of wood because um, it's a state park and you gotta follow those rules. So I will be probably buying um, a couple of um, bundles of wood and then any water that I that I use will likely come from the actual campground, like a faucet or whatever from the campground if I have to do that and then uh, purify it and so on and so forth using the contents of the bag. But here in Indiana, there's there's a reason why you don't see a whole lot of survival shows in Indiana. And it typically is because Indiana is resource heavy. We have a lot of water in Indiana. You can probably walk in just about any direction for anywhere from a quarter to a mile, a quarter of a mile to a mile, um, and find either a retention pond or a creek or a river um, or a spring-fed uh, lake or, or, or such things like that. Um, water is generally no problem here in Indiana. Same thing with wood. 
Um, there are cops of trees everywhere. Uh, Indiana used to be uh, nearly all woodland. Um, and then, you know, we chopped it all down, but uh, not all of it. There's uh, big chunks of woodland all over the place. So, especially in state park. Um, but again, have to follow the rules of the local area. So that's uh, another couple of guidelines, um, a couple of uh, rules of engagement for the exercise. The, um, and then the, the last sort of rule of engagement is that I will have, if stuff gets really bad, um, I will have a couple layers of fallback that I may have to do. So the first layer of fallback that, that if I have to, if I have to, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking my bag the bag that I created, my bug out bag. I'm going to be taking this bag as well, throw it in the truck. Um, and then if I, if I, if I really, really have to, I'm going to tap into that bag. Um, the second rule is, is that, you know, if the weather gets really bad, I will fall back onto my truck, um, and, and sleep in the truck or whatever. And then the last rule is I'm just going to come home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am old and bushcrafting and, and, and living off the land are major weak points for me. So if it gets really bad, um, and I did this two years ago, I just, I just went home because it was horrible. Um, it was the same time of year, it was super hot, got rained on, it was a mess. I, I'm hoping that I survive a lot longer than that in the wilderness, but um, two years ago, I failed the test, I would have died in the zombie apocalypse. Um, the, the last kind of um, sort of rule of engagement that I'm going to have is power. Um, I am going to try to film this all the way through the experience, including how the bag holds up and the gear in the bag, uh, how I hold up um, during my hikes when I pack the bag up and go on a bug out hike for a couple of miles on Saturday. Um, so I am going to use power. Uh, the truck that I have has a uh, built in generator um, that I can I can use to power up my electronic devices because I'm going to be filming it. So. Um, things like iPad, uh, camera, and my phone. Um, you know, yes, in a survival situation, I won't have those things. I'll have the truck, but, um, you know, we'll have like all this electronic gear that I need. And if it's an EMP, then I don't, I won't have that stuff anyway. But that's outside the boundaries of the exercise. In order to be able to film it and kind of document what's going on, I will be using the generator in the truck and charging everything and using everything that way. So, Anyway, so that's my plan for this weekend. Let's see how I do. Um, my confidence level is so-so, uh, but that's why I'm doing the exercise, right? So um, I will document and record as much as possible, throw it out on, on YouTube uh, and other social media outlets, and uh, kind of let you know how it goes. So, all right, peace, stay safe.